اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یریدون لیطف نور اللہ بافواہہم واللہ متم نوره ولو کریہ الكافرون هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالہدا ودین الحق لیظہره على الدین کلہ ولو کریہ المشرکون صدری <سؤال> وحل العقدت ام لسانی یفقہ قولی ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز اینڈ لسنرز السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دا آیا آئی ہیو ریڈ دیز آیا فروم سورہ الصف چیپٹر 61 ورس 8 9 10 11 ٹوڈے آئی ایم ناٹ انٹرسٹڈ ٹو گیو اینی لیکچر اینی سرمن اینی فائری اسپیچ Today, basically, I want to open the eyes of Muslim people. What is the difference between donation and begging? You see, today is the norm. Wherever any Islamic organization asks for donation, people start thinking that these people are a beggar. They have opened the shops. They don't want to do anything. they are not good in any other stuff in this world so they started this shop they are mesmerizing people they are tantalizing people hypnotizing people as like magnet towards the iron foiling so in this way we will catch these customers and then we will get money from them and that is all trust me my brother sisters this is not the case islam was spread by the help from Uthman radiyatullah anhu from Umar radiyatullah anhu Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyatullah anhu Islam was never spread alone in the thinking of spirituality that something help will come from the heavens Allah has created this dunya this dunya has materialistic objects into it and for that there is a system and that system we have to follow and this is our test You see I'm talking about head transaction. We have accounts, bank accounts. We do multi billion dollar transactions all across the Atlantic Ocean towards this other island then island to another continent. We are busy in these transactions billion of dollars. I'm not talking about the trivial trivial transactions I'm talking about the billion of dollars. But what Allah says Listen to this transaction of Allah. يريدون ليطفئوا نور الله بافواههم والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافرون. Their intention is to extinguish Allah's light by blowing with their mouths. But Allah will complete the revelation of his light even though the unbelievers may detest it. Who is trying to do that? Jews Today the best example you can get from the Jews you know guys what is that that example is media media is doing this game they want to extinguish the light of Allah the guidance from their mouths babbling all day and night lying and lying and lying that Islam is this Islam is bad Islam is this Allah says do it then see whose light and whose guidance will win who allazi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa din al haqq li yuzhirahu ala al din kullihi walau karih al mushrikun it is he who sends down his messenger he is allah it is he who has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth and that may proclaim it over all other religion even though the pagans may detest it bulldoze them all all the philosophies 
any philosophy which is in the contrast of Islam as a deen, social, political, economic system, bulldoze him. Bulldoze that philosophy. It will never exist in front of Holy Quran, the power of Islam. How oh, matter these kafir dislike that today as we see it, they have problems with Islam. Remember that the war is not about Islam. The war is within Islam. And that is social, political, economic system. Not on mazhab. Not on rites and rituals. You can come and go to America and you can open the mosques and all these stuffs and you can remove their synagogues and their churches. No problem. They will offer you the lands and uh, this uh, premises to come and open and enjoy. But as long as you open your mouth regarding the socio political economic system of islam here comes the fight ya ayyuhal ladina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim oh ye who believe we believe in allah right we believe we are the believers allah is addressing to us shall i lead you to a bargain transactions that will save you from the grievous penalty تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ Say that you believe in Allah and His Rasul. We already believe that. But we put full stop. What is that? تُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعَالَمُونَ Allah says and that ye strive your utmost in the cause of Allah with your property with your finance, with your money, and with your persons, your own life, that ye best for you if ye but knew. Allah says, if you have known this, and there is one more place in the Holy Quran where Allah says, that when of you people will die, when many of you will come and say, Allah, give us one day respite in this dunya. We will spend our all money, all possessions to you. O oh Lord of the worlds, then Allah says, No, your time is up. The respite time is finished. So now you pay the price. Everything you have in your possessions in this dunya, materialistic possession, these are all the blessings of Allah. This is not your property. Nothing on this dunya it belongs to you. Remember that. You are not the Malik. You are not the king. You are not the owner of that property. This is the fadl of Allah. This is the jaza of Allah. Allah has bestowed upon you. But it doesn't mean that you are the owner towards that. Because Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Bani Israel, you know this Surah Bani Israel and this the last verse. This verse I am quoting many times in my lecture. Last verse, one, one, one. وَقُلْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا say praise be to Allah who begets no son has no partner in his dominion nor needs he any to protect him from the humiliation yeah magnify him وكبر about Allah magnify him not any other Tom, Dick and Harry his greatness and glory. Allahu Akbar. This is what we say. His greatness. Everything belongs to him. And we are just his vice royals. We are just his mouthpieces. We are just tools. That we Allah has sent us into his dunya. To spread his message. So. This is what the point is. The possession belongs to Allah. And you are only just caretaker towards it. Let me give you the example here. You know that when you die, your belongings will be here. Alexander the Great, he said that. He said, when I will die, please open my hand, stretch my hand, so people will see Alexander. When he will die, he is taking nothing with him. That is all. This is the example he left for the dunya. This is the lesson he left for the dunya. Whatever you are, how great king you are. But at the end, you will have nothing in your possession. So, the spiritual level, all things belong to Allah. But for the land law, Allah has given you private ownership. If land belongs to you, of course, it's your land. It's your private ownership. But the spiritual matter, the pivotal spine of this all discussion is that money belongs to Allah. If 
the gays that need to spread Islam, your money must be invested by the hook or by the crook. Today I'm going to talk from heart to heart towards my brethren. Quranic Dawa Center International has been established in 2010 actively, not passively. Before it was acting, before it was working passively. After 2010, Alhamdulillah, it is working since then actively. Now the things are coming up, new technology, new ways of lecturing, new kind of articles, publishing stuff. We need donation. We need help from our Muslim brothers and sisters. I myself doing this work alone from my halal expenses. But now the expenses are rising up day by day and we have to coop ourselves to the new equipment and new technology. For this reason, I, I must need this premises, high advanced audio and visual activities, these studios of lecturing, all that stuff, I need it. I told my Muslim brothers and sisters, you help me financially, just leave kuffar towards me. I will take care of them alone, inshallah, alone. This is my, I'm not self-boasting. This is all the blessings of Allah. You just forget this. I will handle all of them, all these monkeys, TV evangelists, up to new PhD DDs or new psychologists or new philosophers. Alhamdulillah. But the thing is that, Everybody in this dunya needs help. Had it not been for Usman to help Prophet there wouldn't have been easy for him to spread Islam. This is the test from Allah Bari Ta'ala. He tests us. He tests everyone. Somebody has been tested by his possessions. Somebody has been tested by his knowledge. So I'm telling to my Muslim brother and sister, the one who are not who are not capable of doing da'wah, propagation, proselytizing, they must spend their money. They must spend their... Go to churches. By God, these Christian missionaries, look how they are minting money, making fools to the people. They are increasing the church with lies. Lies, lies towards Allah Bari Ta'ala. Look at the people in Pakistan, in other Asian countries. These, they are sitting in their houses, they are minting money. These peers, these all kind of babas, Sufi e Pashmina poshe hal must. This Sufi, this saint, everywhere you find it, in all religions you find it, he is totally in meditation. He doesn't know. He, his level of consciousness has reached to somewhere you don't have any idea. Az nawai shola e kawal must. This is the shola, kawal. He has in all meditation. He's getting into lightedness. Quran is not in his curriculum. This is what he said. Quran is not there. This is all deception he's playing. Quran is not in his congregation. Once you do become holy, holy robo, holy robo. And after when you get strong, when you are stunted up, go and fight the opposition. But the problem is that we are stuck into the first part. We are just all meditating in this thinking. Oh, we have our personal rituals, rites. This is enough. We go salah, we go som, we do hajj, that's all. Whatever the happening in the other world, whatever the economy says, oh, that is all natural. This is what you call selfishness, selfishness, selfishness. But when you talk about Tawheed, the real Allah's message, everybody is acting like wilted flowers. I don't know what will shake us. What will shake us? A tremor from Allah? A small earthquake from Allah? What is, what is the thing which will move us? I don't understand. What are we waiting for? Are we waiting for divine punishment? And what's I don't understand. This is very sad when I see the salaries or wages of ulamas in my country, Pakistan. This is absolutely disgrace. You see, the donation thing has been caricatured, prostituted, as that this is the thing which these all bearded people, these all ulamas, that is their job. Thus, everything they want, this money only, 
they are just beggars they have beggars mentality this is all because the reason is when the government has no proper setup for these ulamas after their graduation dars nizami what they will do what they will do they have no values whatsoever you see i was heard by one of my friend he was the alim his salary was 6000 rupees can you believe it 6000 rupees what do you want from him you want him from him to learn islam and everything and pay him 6000 rupees and then they have created this committee the committee belongs to masjid and those committee people are totally worldly people very few of them have inspiration of islam but you see their psychological pressure on the imam of the masjid he is always working as like closing his eyes and whatsoever amanna saddaqna he has no courage he has no guts to say that you are wrong because he knew and he knows inside his heart if i try to do anything against the committee i will be fired next morning and then there is a greediness between each other hearts one one person is against another you see they are thinking that we get the masjid <clears throat> beside the masjid will we get small house connected to that that part of the masjid and then they start inter politics they try to pull the legs of each other imams that i my seat must be there my seat must be there they lost the all brotherhood piety sobriety trust they have created grudges into the hearts there is no ikhlas i'm telling you there is no ikhlas in anybody's heart these days now whatever you can you cannot cheat allah with your beard and sunnah libas allah is watching allah knows this is what happens our value is decrease so much you see as mera ye hal boot ki to chaatta hu main aur inka ye kehna dekh mere farsh pe naring this is the stature has become for us the ulama in pakistan what is that the situation is so ugly i am here only to lick the sole of the shoes and you have to bend down to lick the soles the saying that don't even try to do that you are not even eligible to bend down and lick my soles this is how you are go and crawl somewhere else like insects we have lost our stature we have lost our integrity we have lost and we created pakistan on the name of islam islamic republic constitution nothing will go to the repugnant of holy quran and sunnah and this is everything is going against the holy quran and sunnah the highest order of intellectual hypocrisy as allah says in the holy quran once you try to break the promise i will put nifaq in your hearts nifaq we are suffering we are suffering from nifaq now allah has promised in this in the holy quran when the nation breaks my promise then allah says i put nifaq into their hearts nifaq means double standards you do something else you like speaking tongue under the cheek this kind of behavior you will start doing so when i heard this i was so much sad 6000 rupees and you want him to do everything for you and the general people they think that this the job of islam is for mullahs these mullahs you know these barbaric uncouth uncivilized anti social characters this is the job for them we are forgiven we are chosen we are some special we have riches we have bank accounts what are these ulama these nothing they are nothing people then their only job is to come on nikah to come on janaza that's all or lead the salah bas today the job of the ulama has become professions unbelievable situation professions that this is the job of this guy this is nikah khwan and this is the job person who will only do marriage and all that stuff okay this alim is his job for janaza and this he will and they have accepted subconsciously they have accepted islam islam has become as profession now they have lost the real integrity in them khairukum man ta'allam alquran wa 'allama prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that the best upon you the best in you is the person who learns the quran and teaches the quran who understands the quran and make other understand the quran prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that the one who starts teaching or spreading the quran he is on the guide he is on the right track allah has given him the guidance he is already guided if the other person misses this thing out but he is already guided 
Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that the one side, the rope of the Holy Quran, is in the hands of Allah, and the other part is in the hands, your hand. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَامِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ The best job on this earth is the person who calls, who invites everyone or anyone towards Allah and does righteous deeds and says, Indeed, I am a Muslim. Chapter 41, verse 30. This is the best job and the best job has no scale whatsoever, no respect whatsoever in our country. Why don't these ulamas go to the parliament and fight for their possession that give us our status? Give us the highest scale, the say wages. But you see, they have become beggar mentalities. They cannot fight and go fight and fight for their own rights. This is the Islamic country. So this is what Prophet ﷺ say. Bada al-Islamu gariban wa sayyudu kama bada gariban fatuba lil ghuraba. But how long? How long we will behave like these kind of little children? Why don't we go and talk to them? Especially the ulamas. Why the madrasas and all these things are being running by the personal committee or the board of directors? How? Why? Why is it so? Why the government doesn't support it? Government can support many fashion design shows. All these haram stuff government supports. But this kind of just cause government is not supporting. They have to go and ask donation, chanda from the door to door, door to door to run the small minimum requirements of the masjid. Astaghfirullah. What kind of Muslim we have become? You see, there are two kinds of people in this dunya. One, introverts. Other, extroverts. Introverts are the real animals animals i rather call it walking on this earth they are just the weight extra weight to this earth meaning they live their own life bus personal life they don't care what happened in syria what is happening in burma what is happening in palestine what is happening in bosnia what have been happening in afghanistan they don't give anything they worry about their lifestyle i want to make big house villas manors palaces castles I want to put billion dollars, million dollars into my bank accounts. So every month I will get some malai, some cream from it, interest. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to make billion projects. These are introverts. They don't care what's happening around surrounding. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no. These are the worst people for the society. Self-conceited. And because of this nation, these people, this society, Total revolution fails. Total revolution will never come from this kind of society. Introverts. But there are extroverts. The people who are active. Not passive all the time. And these are the people who always brought and will bring total revolution in the society. Extroverts. Umar Razi who was one of them which they actively supports anything. They don't care what happened. Just do fall. Put your hand into the lion's mouth and don't think what happens after that. I wish Allah make this ummah extroverts now. This is the dua from my heart that Allah put things into the ummah to use their petrol dollars, spread the message of Islam, spread the message of Islam as a deen, not as a madhab. All the society destroys due to the sick introverts who are sitting in their own selfish world. Revolution never occurs, remember that, within this wilted society. They are wilted people. We should find the total identification with the cause. If you don't have total identification with the cause, you are already doomed. You are already destructed. You are nothing. You are trivial. You are docile. You are doormat to the people. You have to find total identification. What is that? Allah's deen into the whole world. Thy kingdom must come onto this earth as it is in the heaven. The celestial bodies are obeying according to Surah Fusila chapter 41 last verse number 12, 13, 14. This is what we have to do. First we have to identify ourselves. Inshallah Allah will catch our hands. I am asking these Muslims 
please listen these questions of mine these are intrapersonal thoughts in my mind how long will we behave like uncharted seas how long will we behave like diplomatic bureaucrats how long we will give pretending smiles how long will we speak with tongue under the cheek how long will we lie on trivial issues how long will we procrastinate how long will the love of this materialistic objects enter into our hearts how long will we behave like socio economical animals how long will we keep grudges in our hearts how long will we do economical exploitation how long will we cheat allah with our beards and sunnah clothes how long will we follow our secular ways how long will we do intellectual hypocrisies how long will we suffer from the diseases of hypernormalization cognitive dissonance ambivalence dichotomy you see what is hypernormalization this word means that you see everything is bad in front of your eyes going on but you say it's okay something back of the mind says it's okay no problem dichotomy cognitive dissonance double standards confusion skepticism agnosticism all are the fields in it how long will we obey the tyrants how long will we act like see no evil hear no evil speak no evil how long will the termite eat us how long will we simmer in our own soups what divine punishment we want from allah are we the ummah of rasulullah are we the daughters of the wives of prophet muhammad peace be upon him humanity had not betrayed god in the whole history as we see today global war against allah and his rasul global commotion of immodesty proclivities and shirk global falling of interest banking system speculations gambling nudity global falling of one of the life jew world order new world order global falling of the western ideologies global falling of the popular sovereignty constituency in the democracy betray we are doing with allah that globally the gays and homosexuals are walking come lut lut was the only one nation that nation was only one and god destroyed them now everybody is come lut the history of man can never record it this kind of which you have facing now global fitna put allah beside total secularism you believe whatsoever monkey donkey snake jesus rama buddha vishnu shiva hanuman but don't bring god inverted commas into our social matters this is what took us secularism at last you see global falling of total secularism in the muslim nation as well as non muslims this is the reality the ugly dark side of this that is why you see there is no balance and distribution of wealth and when you have no balance of distribution of wealth two kinds of people are born one is so much rich they will forget allah in their riches and one is so much poor part that they will forget allah in faqr in faqr prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that faqr will lead you to kufr now where you will get this justice where you will get social justice how you will get social justice the sufi is sitting he thinks that the mother will save him he doesn't care about anybody else last verdict of mine global falling of total secularism in all the muslim nations as well as non muslims india is the biggest secular democratic country so what do we want we want allah to come down and talk disgrace 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 wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin